How's it going everyone? This is Dre with another damn level. I want to go over a quick fix for Terra. Uh, I recently reinstalled it to see some of the new content and was running into some horrendous FPS issues. So in light of that, I dug around to the forums, tried some of my own experiments, uh, looked at GPU scales and numbers and everything like that, and came up with a two-step fix that was the greatest impact on my FPS. Uh, one of which is actually pretty interesting. So you're going to need to get into the game engine configuration file for these fixes. And if you install through Steam like I did, you can find this in your C program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, Terra, and then go into client, S1 game, and config. Kind of a, a lengthy step-by-step -step process, but it's pretty easy to find. You can see it in my explorer up there too. Uh, for reference, the file you're going to need to open and Notepad works just fine is the s1engine.ini. This contains all of the settings for how the game runs on your machine and what it uses to render everything in front of you. So you can right click it and go open with and then go to Notepad. Uh, it comes with, with Windows, it should be pretty easy to, to find and open. Once you are there uh, and you have the file open, the first thing we need to take a look at is the smooth frame rate levels. So it's under the engine dot game engine uh, setting block. And these two values right here, the minimax smooth frame rate. So mine was set to something really atrocious. It was like uh, 20 and 42 which is terrible. Uh, I found this because I was looking at my GPU levels and they were at a constant like 35 to 40% of my GPU was being taxed, yet I was getting between 15 and 25 FPS. So the game wasn't actually using all the power that I had on my video cards. And that's, that was part of the, a large part of the problem why I was getting such abysmal FPS. So there's two settings we can give these two values, depending on how strong you feel your video card is. The first is for the min, min smooth rate, we can give it a setting of 50. And for the max, we can give it a setting of 80. That's if you feel your video card isn't enough to run the game at around 80 to 90 FPS. If you do feel like your machine can handle uh, really everything you can throw at it, which was more uh, my feeling. I have two four gig cards uh, running at 1,007 uh, megahertz when gaming. Uh, PCI 3, like they're heavy, heavy cards. I've got an eight core processor. Like there's, I should have no problem running this yet. I was getting these FPS rates. So if you feel that way, you can set this to 60 and 120. Now you can change some of these values around, but these two settings are the ones I got the best performance at. The min smooth frame rate is the minimum frame rate that your that the engine will attempt to run and render the game at, even if things are getting really intense. And since this was set really low for me, it was perfectly happy at running it at 20 FPS and not taxing my GPU enough to keep the FPS up. The max frame rate is the maximum frame rate that the go that the game engine will try to hit when the engine, not your, not your GPU, but when the engine feels like it doesn't, it's not too stressed. Unfortunately, for my test, it shows that Terra always thinks it's stressed. So I've never actually hit uh, like the a constant 120, uh, which is a little disappointing. So with this fix, I got uh, an additional 15 to 18 FPS. It's uh, it was a little weird. Like, if these settings were actually being applied correctly, I feel like I would have got more. But it was definitely an increase, and I was seeing an increase in activity on my GPU, which is always, which is what we're looking for. The second part of this fix is, for some people, when Terra installs, uh, it would seem that it's set up to use DirectX 10, and this, uh, is. Not really, it's not good. 
Uh, DirectX 10 has been outdated for a while. We got DirectX 11 with Windows Vista and uh, Windows 7. So if you search for allow D3, you'll come across this setting and it will be set to true if it's using DirectX 10, which from everyone that I've come across, it has been oddly enough. This is a problem. DirectX 10 uh, is, you know, the numbers would denote is not as good as DirectX 11. Uh, DirectX 11 had a lot of fixes for performance issues and leaks and everything like that, that DirectX 10 doesn't. So if your card supports DirectX 11, which if you purchased it, you know, in the last, I'd say three years, you're probably safe. Um, we're going to set this to false. And then we're going to add an option to tell the game to run in DirectX 11. So to do this, you just, uh, you set the allow D310 to false and then copy and paste that option. And I added mine to the bottom of the config here. And you'll see here that we have allow D3 D11. So that's saying we want to use DirectX 11 and we set this to true. This was the biggest boost for FPS in me. I went from an average of 15 to 25 FPS. And then after these two fixes, I went up to an average of uh, 61 to 70, depending on what was going on, on the highest graphics quality setting. So that's it for the fix. You can save the file, you can start up the game and then check out your performance. For me, it was a huge, huge difference. And I know it has been for a couple other people that I know and have had it try, uh, had them try it out. It may not work for everyone. And as far as uh, I know, this is a brand agnostic fix, which means this can occur if you use NVIDIA or AMD. It's truly fascinating as to how it set, comes up with some of these settings. Uh, my machine was more than capable, but it was set up to run DirectX uh, 10 and an abysmal FPS. So I hope this has helped someone. Uh, if you get really frustrated with the game, having a really low FPS, it being really choppy, very unresponsive, I definitely try would try setting these up. Assuming you know your card can handle uh, DirectX 11. You can probably even get away with not changing your uh, FPS smooth settings and just going to DirectX 11. And I'd be willing to bet it, you'd see an improvement from DirectX 10. So that's it. I hope it's helpful and I will talk to you in the next video.